want to thank God for so sir. You know, the timing as well. He said when the brother had left the house, Abraham was saying, well, apparently they knew that somebody came back and they wanted to come and take the things he came back with. But when he was at, not at home, he came. I just want to thank God for timing and that, that the timing of God in our lives will be perfect in the name of Jesus. And what we've done for the past three weeks, and I'm still like to continue for us to keep going through the books of the Bible once we can on a weekly basis. One of the things that has taught me so much doing this is how relevant the Bible is for our day-to-day -day living. You know, sometimes we, we ministers, we preach on you know, the con con contemporary things that are happening that are very relevant and sometimes for motivational things to help people to you know move on with life. But I've soon suddenly realized that you see the Bible is an ageless book. You know the word this, the song we sang today says ancient words. A lot of times we don't want to read the Bible because oh but they are ever true. So today we're going to look at the book of Jude. It's just a one chapter book. And I encourage us every week, try and finish one book in the Bible. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. One thing with the Word of God is, it has power. The Bible says in Hebrews, it says the Word of God is quick and is sharper than anything. It has power as you read it, as you meditate on it. It has power to change your life. It has power to, you know, to transform. It has power to heal you. And it has power to save. So I encourage us, even in our know, read one, one book a week, at least one book. We find that within a year, you have almost read the whole Bible. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. So let's read the book of Jude. It says, Jude, the servant of Jesus Christ and brother of James, to them that are sanctified by God the Father and preserved in Jesus Christ and called. Mercy unto you, and peace and love be multiplied. Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of all ordained to this condemnation. Ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. I will therefore put you into remembrance, though you once knew, that how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterwards destroyed them that believed not. And the angels which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation. He had reserved in everlasting chains unto darkness, unto the judgment of the great day. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah and the cities about them, in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication and going after strange flesh, are set for an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Likewise also these filthy dreamers defile the flesh, despise dominions, and speak evil of dignities. Yet Michael, the archangel, when contending with the devil, he disputed about the body of Moses, does not bring against him a wedding accusation, but say, the Lord rebuke thee. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But whatever they know naturally, as brute beasts, in those things they corrupt themselves. Woe unto them, for they have gone in the way of Cain, and ran greedily after the error of Balaam for the war, and perished in the gains of Korah. These are sports in your feats of charity, when they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, plows they are without trade, 